According to this graph, if we want to make a lot of money and if we are not dumb and if we love ourselves and want to be happy, then we should choose Java as our programming language. Java is an object-oriented programming language developed by James Gosling and his team. In the early 1990s, there was a growing need for a platform-independent language to write software that could run on various electronic devices. While C and C++ were the popular choices at that time, they were considered platform-dependent. Thus, the Java development began in 1991, initially named Oak after an oak tree that stood outside James Gosling's office. However, the company named Oak Technologies had already trademarked the name for their language. So, it was renamed Java at the time of release in 1995. Fast forward to today, Java is used everywhere, from Android development to web applications, gaming, embedded systems and even on Tinder profiles, making it really important to learn Java. Its syntax is similar to C and C++ language and the mantra of Java is write once, run everywhere, highlighting its platform independence. Unlike C or C++, where code is compiled into machine language, Java compiles source code into bytecode, which can run on any platform using the Java virtual machine. This unique feature makes a Java both a compiled and interpreted programming language. To get started with Java, first, download the Java development kit for your respective operating system and install it. After that, open your favorite code editor and create a new file with a .java extension. In this file, the first step is to create a class using the class keyword. It is important to note that your file name should match your class name. Oh, and remember, Java is an object-oriented programming language, so you should be familiar with some basic object-oriented programming concepts. You know, I don't have any idea what that means. Don't worry, I've got your back. A single line of code is a statement. When you group multiple statements together, you create a function. Then, when you group multiple functions and statements, you create a class. Think of a class as a template that describes how to create something. Let's take a real-world example, a car. Imagine a class as the basic blueprint of a car, where you can define its characteristics, like color and the number of wheels. These are called attributes. To create a car with these attributes, you can use a constructor which has the same name as the class itself. A car can perform actions like starting, stopping, honking and more. To define these actions for a car, you create functions within the car class. These functions are called as methods. Methods and functions basically mean the same thing, but when we use functions within a class, we call them methods. Up until now, we have only created a blueprint of a car, not an actual car. To create an actual car based on this blueprint, you use the class name followed by an object of your choice, then the new keyword and finally the class name again with the attributes in brackets. This way, you have created your first car using the car class. You can create as many cars as you want and access the methods of each car separately. These objects are also called as an instance of a class. Let's get back to creating our basic program. You start by defining a class with the same file name. And then there's something important to remember. Public static void main string args. This is where we create our main function. Void is the return type of our main function and the actual code goes inside curly braces. To print something, you can use system.out.println with whatever you want to print inside the parentheses. Now, you might wonder about public and static. Java has more than 50 keywords and these two are part of the Java keywords. Public is an access specifier which controls who can access this main function. Public means everyone can access it. And static is used to create variables and methods that belong to a class rather than an object of the class. For example, in our car class, we can access variables and methods after creating an object. But if we declare a static variable like number of cars and increment it in the constructor, you can access the number of cars without creating an object. This is different from non-static variables and methods. Since static variables and methods belong to the class itself, objects created from that class share the same value for static variables. If you change the value of a static variable in one object, it reflects in all other objects too. Now, our main function is the entry point of our program. So it needs to be accessible without creating an object. That's why we use the static keyword. And this string args is used to pass command line arguments to our program. To write comments in Java, we can use double slash for the single line comments and forward slash star, star forward slash for the multi-line comments. Now, the syntax for declaring a variable in Java is simple. First, we write data type, then the variable name and a semicolon. If you want to assign value while declaring variables, then you can do that too. Here, int is the data type, 
num is the variable name and this is the value. There are two types of data types in Java, primitive data types and non-primitive data types. Primitive data types are the basic built-in data types provided by the programming language. There are eight primitive data types in Java, which includes byte, which is used to store numbers, but the size is only 8-bit. So we can store numbers only from minus 128 to 127. If we want to store numbers larger than that, then we can use short. The size is 16 bits, so we can store numbers from minus 32,000 to 32,000. If we want more range, then we can use the most commonly used data type, that is int, which has a range around minus 2 billion to 2 billion. And if that's not enough and you want to store a very large number, then we have long data type, which has a range of around minus 9 quintillion to 9 quintillion. But to tell the Java it is a long number, we need to add L after the value of our long number. Then we have float which is used to store decimal numbers and then double is also used to store the decimal numbers but with higher precision. Now, by default when we write a decimal number in Java, it is considered as double. So when defining the float value, add f at the end of the value. Next is boolean which only stores two values, true and false. Then we have a character which is used to store single characters. Now the non-primitive data types include data types which are created using primitive data types like array. It is a collection of elements of same data type, like this array of numbers. Here, this array is created using the primitive data type, which is int. After that, we have string, which is also a non-primitive data type. It represents a sequence of characters. To declare a string, we write string. Notice here S is capital because in Java, string is a class. So here, we are simply creating an object of the string class. After writing string, we write the variable name and then the value. After this, we have got decision-making statements. Same like other programming languages, Java has four decision-making statements. The syntax for this statement is similar to C and C++ language. Like to write if statements, we write if, then the condition in brackets, and then the code to run when the condition is true in curly braces. We can also add an else statements to run when the condition is false, like this. Now, if I change the value of Devin AI to something else, then the code in else statement will be executed. To add multiple condition check, we can use else if statement. If the first condition is false, then this condition will be checked. Like else if, the condition and then the code in curly braces. Now the code in else if block is executed. If there are many else if statements in your code, you can use switch statement instead of lengthy else if statements. Switch statement is used to compare value of the variable to multiple values. Like here, day is my variable and to write switch statement, we write switch then in bracket the variable whose value we want to compare and in curly braces we write case and then the value and then the code to run when the value of variable is equal to this value. So here if the value of day is equal to 1 this code will be executed and then at last add break statement to break out of the switch statement. Same like this we can add multiple cases if the day is 2 execute this code and so on. We can also have default case which will be executed when no other cases match. So now, if I set the day value to 3, we see twist day printed. And if I set it to 15, there is no case for 15, so the code in default case is executed. Now, let's see loops. First, the while loop, which runs the given code as long as the condition is true. Writing a while loop is so simple. Just write while, then the condition in brackets, and then the code to run in curly braces. We see 1 to 5 printed because after the value of i goes above 5, this less than or equal to condition becomes false and the while loop ends. Then the do while loop, which works the same way but the only difference is that first, it runs the given code and checks the condition. If the condition is not true, it won't run again. Like here, if I do 7, then also 7 is printed. That is because this part of the code executed, which displayed 7 and then the condition was checked, it was false, so this do while loop ended. Next, for loop. We use a for loop when we know how many times we want to run the code. For example, if I want to print hello four times, I can use a for loop like this. First write for, then inside this bracket, declare a variable that will keep the count of how many times our for loop is executed. Then we will have a condition, we want to print four times, so I will do i less than or equal to four, which means this for loop will run until i is less than or equal to four. After this, after every loop, I will increase the value of i by one using this i++ statement. And inside curly braces, the code that I want to run and we see hello printed four times. Then we have for each loop, which is used to easily loop over arrays. 
it looks like this we have the for keyword then the array we want to loop here and this is the data type for every element in the array that is int for this array and every element of the array is treated as num variable so we are printing the value of num and we see the array elements we can change this num to any other name and it will work completely fine once you are done with your coding you can use java c followed by your file name to compile your java code into bytecode then use java followed by your file name to run your java program